to Google Content Network Optimization Training. Today we'll be going through the scope of the Google Network in Australia, optimizing for the Content Network, and finally we'll take a look at some great tools for the Content Network. So firstly, why would you want to advertise on the Content Network? Using the Content Network allows you to reach your customers, not only when they search on Google, but also when they're searching for content across the web. That's right. Now when you take advantage of both our search and content networks, you'll show your ads across the number one online advertising network in Australia, reaching 91.9% .9 of Australian internet users. That's great, Karina. And we know that users actually spend 45% of their time on content, 34% communicating, 16% on commerce, and 5% on search. So the content network allows you to capture more of a user's time online. According to a study by Atlas Digital Marketing, exposing search users to display media from the same advertiser results in a 22% increase in conversions over search alone, suggesting a synergy between these two channels that cannot be measured separately. Over 10.8 million impressions and 2.5 million search clicks from 1.8 million users were analysed for this study. So what are the reasons for this? Well, display advertising is a proven method to generate brand awareness message association and increased purchase intent and it's a great way to reinforce both acquisition and brand messaging that users may receive from other channels. Display messaging can help win over a user who is interested in a brand or product. Display also drives brand searches, a valuable initial step into the purchase process. Search is often used as a navigational tool for users who cannot remember a website's URL. Consumers also may first visit the site by clicking on a display ad then revisit subsequently via search when they're ready to purchase or register. So using Google's search and content networks together can lead to great results. The content network gives you the flexibility of targeting a specific audience that may be interested in your product or service. For example, if I were an athletic shoes retailer, I may want to target sites that are related to athletic interests. The content network allows you to target users at different buying stages, such as people who are doing research on a specific product or people who are completely unaware of your product but have sparked an interest because they saw your ad on a content site. The content network also allows you to test out different ad formats like text ads, image, video or even gadget ads. Taking advantage of different ad formats will allow you to find out which format works best for you. And lastly, you may be able to scale your return on investment metrics by extending your reach, especially if you're unable to obtain any more traffic through the search network. Ads on Google's content network are placed according to the overall theme of all the keywords in that ad group, rather than being triggered by an individual keyword being searched for on google.com.au. Let's take a quick look at an example of how this might work. In the cricket ad group, not every keyword is about cricket. However, the overall theme of all the keywords in the ad group is clearly cricket. Our system intelligently determines that the overall theme of the ad group is the sport of cricket and goes looking through our database of partner sites to find web pages with a cricket theme. It then places the ads on those sites. Later in this presentation, we'll go into more detail about how to create content-only keyword lists so that you can have your ads show on the types of sites you want. Now it's important to remember that ads placed on our content network this way use a cost per click pricing model, so you don't pay unless someone clicks on your ad. Here's a common question. Does it actually perform? Google Search Advertising is a good benchmark for ad performance, so we compared the conversion performance of search ads to that of contextual targeting. We found that 47% of advertisers enjoy a cost per acquisition on the Google Content Network as good or better than the cost per acquisition they achieve with search. Looking deeper into the data found only a small difference between the two programs. Looking at the median advertiser, for every $1 spent acquiring a customer with search, they only spend $0.08 cents more acquiring a customer with the content network. These findings support what we hear every day, that contextual targeting on the Google content network performs. So now we'll take you through some tips and ideas for optimising for the content network. What follows in this presentation are some relatively new techniques for optimising your campaigns for the content network. Feel free to experiment yourself with some of these techniques and remember we would love to hear your feedback and you can write into us through adwords-au at google.com. To optimise for the content network, ideally you should create a separate content only campaign. This doesn't always have to be the case for every single campaign, 
because for some advertisers, their search and content combined campaigns are doing really well. However, for advertisers who are open to having a separate content campaign, here are some of the advantages. You'll have better control over your spend on the content network because you can set separate budgets and bids. You can test different strategies from search, for example, targeting a specific audience. You can pause low performing content ad groups. You can optimize ads specifically for the content pages. And lastly, you can use general keywords that may not be working well on search, but will do better on content. This includes keywords that are inactive or may have a high CPC on search, but are relevant to your product or service. There are a few different ways to target on the content network. The first strategy is something we're all familiar with. That is creating an ad group that is directly targeted to your product or service. So in this example, we have a flower retailer targeting flower related content sites. Now the other two concepts are a little different from what we're used to, so you have to bear with us. On the content network, we can target our ads to sites about products that are complementary to our specific product or service. In this example, the flower retailer is ch targeting chocolate related sites because chocolates, yum, are complements of flowers. So this ad group is actually created for a popular flower retailer when they are looking for additional traffic around Valentine's Day. We can also target a specific audience. So our flower retailer targeted an audience that are in a long distance relationship or who are looking for romantic tips and ideas. And there are many different ways to use the content network. So we have some tips on when to use targeting directly, complementary, and versus a specific audience. We always suggest starting out with the direct target first by creating ad groups that are directly targeted to your product or service. If you find this isn't working or if you're looking for additional traffic, then consider testing out the other two concepts. Targeting complementary products and specific audiences can be particularly useful for advertisers who have very niche products that people wouldn't normally be searching for. So how should we select keywords in order to achieve those various methods of contextual targeting? To start, it's important to focus on an overall theme for your ad group, not individual keywords. Content ad placement is attributed to a concept derived from all the terms in your ad and keyword list as a whole. It does not attribute ad placement to a single keyword alone. When creating keywords, it's unnecessary to add keywords in phrase or exact match. The system reads all keyword match types as broad match, for example, the keyword flowers inputted as phrase or exact match will still be read as broad match. So to save keyword space and your time, just stick with broad match. Similar to search, negative keywords in content ad groups can help to eliminate unwanted impressions. It's important to note that negative keywords on content are weighted to negative themes. For example, if we sold fresh flowers and not fake flowers, good negative keywords to have would be fake, imitation, artificial, silk, plastic, etc. If we match to a content site where fake flowers are a dominant theme on the page, our ad would be less likely to show. However, if we match to a content site where fake flowers are mentioned once and are not the dominant theme on the page, our ad would still be eligible to show. Finally, keyword URLs are unnecessary for content-only campaigns. As we mentioned before, the system is looking at the keyword list as a whole and not individual keywords for content ad placement. For content campaigns, it's best to use the URL that is most relevant to the ad. In terms of the number of keywords to use to build a theme, we recommend no more than 20 to 30 keywords per ad group. So, here, so here's how we would structure the content ad groups for our flower retailer. The first group contains keywords relating to flowers. The second has keywords relating to chocolates. And the third has keywords relating to couples in long distance relationships. You could use the keyword tool in your AdWords account to get ideas for keywords around these themes. As we've seen, there are a few key differences between the keywords we use on the search and content networks. Content keywords may be more general. For example, it's not ideal to add the keyword flower in a search optimized campaign because it's too general and may not be cost efficient. However, within the content ad group, because the system is evaluating the keyword list as a whole, the general keyword flowers will not have that negative effect and will add to the overall theme of the ad group. Additionally, search ad groups often work well when they are very specific. For example, a real estate agent might run separate ad groups for the keywords home and house to ensure the most relevant ad shows to the user. Running such specific AdWords and ad groups would hinder the system's ability to determine a concept for the content network. Therefore, there may be times when you can consolidate search ad groups to create content ones. 
In our example, you would consolidate home and house terms together in one single ad group. It's important to remember that you have different goals when creating separate search and content campaigns. For search campaigns, you're thinking of keywords that people will type into google.com.au that you want to trigger your ad. Then you group similar keywords together to make sure the ad creatives are relevant. You are telling yourself, when someone searches for X, I want them to see my ad on google.com.au. However, for content campaigns, you are thinking of the themes of sites you want to have your ads show up on, then creating keyword lists that reflect those themes. Try saying to yourself, when someone is browsing sites about X, I want them to see my ad. In this case, X might be a directly related theme, a complementary theme, or the theme of sites visited by an interested audience. Now, I know it's a different way of thinking, but we promise the more you practice, the easier it gets. Let's go over some suggestions for ad text we would utilise on the content network. Some of the suggestions that we recommend for content are the same for search, so we'll go through the areas that are unique to writing ad text for the content network. Make sure you're thinking about the users on the page and write ads to catch the user's attention. On the search network, users are actually looking for your product or service, whereas on the content network, users are much more engaged in the content of the site rather than the ads being shown. So you want to make sure your ads are compelling enough that they stand out from the site's content. Avoid using keyword insertion for the content network. Keyword insertion can definitely boost click-through rates for search because the ad displays to the user exactly what they're searching for. With the content network, the system will insert whichever keyword is most relevant to the site. This may work well for some advertisers, but keep in mind that the landing page that users see may not always be relevant to the user. So we generally suggest that you use static ad text whenever possible. In instances where your product or service may not be directly related to the page concept, it's important to tie in your product or service with the concept in your ad. In this instance, we can see our flower retailer has used the ad in the chocolates campaign to encourage people to send flowers with their chocolates for Valentine's Day. For the long distance relationships ad group, they're encouraging users to send flowers to their long distance partner. Many sites in the Google network also accept image, animated and click to play video ads. So don't forget to upload these types of ads into your new ad groups as well if you have them. Next, let's take a look at some handy content network tools. The Placement Performance Report is a report that allows you to see the sites on which your ad has been placed. To run this report, simply select the Placement Performance Report type from the Reports tab within your AdWords account. To gain more control over where your ads are shown across the network, you can use the Site Exclusion tool to exclude sites that clash with your interests. You can enter domains or subdomains using this tool to ensure your ads stop showing on specific sites within our network. Remember, excluding a site in the content network will prevent you from showing on all of the pages that fall under that site's domain. We suggest that you review these sites carefully before you decide to exclude them. After all, the content network allows you to reach a target, targeted audience across a broad range of sites, and we wouldn't want you to miss any customers. And finally, to conclude, Here's just a quick overview of some of the tips that we went over in training. One thing to keep in mind is that what works for one advertiser may not work for another, so it's important to keep on testing and figure out which method works the best for you. These are some guidelines to help you get started on the content network. Now thank you for sitting through our presentation on optimising for the content network and we hope you enjoyed it and had as much fun as we did making it. If you have any queries, you can visit our Help Centre by searching for AdWords Help Centre on google.com.au or you can simply email us at adwords-au at google.com. Until later, we'll see you then. Thanks. Bye.